Hi, Eric with Rockin' H Farm Toys, coming to you from my new workshop here in the garage, and I had a YouTube request to demonstrate how to stretch a DCP truck. So today what I thought I'd do is stretch a truck, and then also show you how to prepare a DCP truck to uh, put a Rockin' H grain bed kit on. So without further ado, we'll get started, and I want to show you a few uh, of the tools you need and, and some of the parts you can use. And if you haven't watched one of my previous videos, I'm not a huge rule keeper, so this is merely the way I do it. And if there's uh, better ways or other ideas, I really hope some of you will uh, post comments in the comment box. Uh, that way we can all learn together and, and maybe get some different ideas shared. So what I have here is a, a project truck that I'm currently working on. This one is prepared for a Rock and H grain bed that I'll be doing. And uh, this one's going to get some new fenders and shortened stacks that'll be beveled. So, uh, but it's about an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch uh, too short for the bed that I want to put on. It's going to get a twenty foot bed. And then I have a DCP cab over that I'm going to do for myself. And uh, this one, as you can tell, is really short. So I got to stretch this one at least an inch uh, is what I'm figuring to receive an eighteen foot rock and H bed that uh, will be going on this one. I also have two others that will get the same bed. Some of the things you can use to stretch a bed, uh, you can use brass, which I'm going to use. Um, this is C-channel, 3 16 C-channel, which uh, will work. You can also use um, rectangular tubing. I've used a lot of that in the past, mostly because I can get it at my local hardware store. And this I have to order off the web and uh, it's not as easy to find and get um, but this you can find all day long and this is 3 16 by 3 32 inch rectangular tubing I've also seen guys on the internet use uh, styrene channel and styrene tubes so really uh, use what you have access to and what you're comfortable uh, using I don't know that there's a right or wrong way uh, to stretch it uh, or whatever you choose to use to stretch it so like I mentioned, this one's ready. All I have to do is cut this one. Um, and this one, I got to do some other work too. Um, you could use a traditional hacksaw to cut your frame. I've used a Dremel with a abrasive cutoff wheel. And I've used that exclusively for, for the last couple of years. And then I just bought a, a, a bandsaw, so that's actually what I'll use. And I'll show you how I use the bandsaw. Uh, in a bit. So either three of the tools um, feel free to use. Um, I actually tried once using um, a side cutter uh, to, to split the frame and that ended up uh, bending and warping the frame which uh, wasn't a huge deal but I wouldn't recommend doing that. So we'll start taking parts off of this. Okay you want to take your fenders off. Um, it's alright if you break these because um, to reuse them we'll have to do some creative work to them. All this plastic stuff comes off. Uh, one step I'll throw in here is uh, these uh, pieces for your fifth wheel plate. I always take a side cutter and cut those off and then I'll go ahead and grind that smooth with the Dremel or rotary sander. Saw now, and um, what I'm going to do is come in, cut the frame. You can take the uh, tires off if you're nervous about cutting it with the wheels on. Um, I've done this a number of times, and so I'm comfortable doing it with the wheels on and with the fuel tanks on and all that. So again, want to wear eye protection and all that stuff, and then come in here, turn on your saw, and uh, make a clean cut. As you can tell, nice clean cut and now we're ready to move on to the next steps. The frames are cut and I took the liberty of shaving them down to make all the uh, brass fit for the stretch on both trucks. Um, I didn't want to bore you to death uh, with that work. And you'll notice that on the peat I had to do quite a bit of work and you may not 
be able to see very well, but to get the 3 16 inch channel to fit around the frame took quite a bit of shaving and work. If you have a Dremel, like I have, uh, it's very simple. You can come in here and shave uh, the top of the frame down and the insides depending on what type of material you're using, but certainly you can shave the frame down and make it so your brass channel will fit around the frame. And um, go on the outside of the frame and then uh, you can cover up some of the work or the ugly lines. You'll notice the uh, International here. I went ahead and I took my Dremel again and I shaved off where the fifth wheel plate was and put and smoothed up uh, that whole area. Also, I went ahead and stretched for a 20 foot frame, 20 foot rock and H bed versus an 18 which I had mentioned earlier in the in the video. Um, I put a 20 on there and I like the way it looks so that's what I'm going to do. Again, took my Dremel, came in here, shaved the top of the frame down, shaved the inside. It takes quite a bit of work but if you have a Dremel again it's pretty simple and then my uh, rectangular tubing fits around there so you'll see I use channel also rectangular tubing. You can see I've got my uh, trucks glued together. I painted my channel iron and also the rectangular tubing before I installed it and and put them together. Uh, one thing when you go back together with your channel iron or the rectangular tubing is to keep your truck level and square as you uh, before you glue it so I recommend dry fitting it and then uh, see how everything comes together and then with a little bit of super glue uh, so if it does happen to get out of square you can break it apart uh, dab some super glue in the different pieces, glue them together and uh, when it looks like it's right uh, go ahead and add more glue and then you're basically finished. Um, as you, for all the trucks that I'm doing I put grain beds on mine and some guys like to stretch them out and then add a bunch of chrome and deck plates and and really trick them out and there's another uh, guy on YouTube that uh, has done some remarkable videos on how to install a lot of different pieces and he also has uh, his own stretching kit which is for sale at his website and if you go to the Rockin' H Facebook page in the notes you'll see a link for his videos and, uh, and the stuff he's selling if you want to do some other things with your trucks. The final detail I added um, was drive shaft on each one of them. I said you could reuse parts of uh, your drive shaft from before and I did on the white one. I just used the front piece where the U-joint goes and then I made use some pipe and rod to piece together a drive shaft. On the cab over I went ahead and just used pipe and rod for the whole thing. No hard and fast rules on that either. You could use styrene rod and pipe. I've got aluminum rod and pipe um, and also brass. I've used brass in the past as well. So uh, whatever you happen to have on hand or whatever your look you're going for you can go ahead and do. Um, I will end up painting my drive shafts on both trucks just so they they blend in a little bit better. Also you'll notice a lot of uh, paint that's been shaved off from the different uh, treatments that I did. You can go back and paint that and touch that up with a small brush or a q-tip um, and clean those up too and, and that works very well. Thanks friends, that'll do it for another Rockin' H Farm Toys do-it-yourself video. I hope you learned something here. I ask again if you have a best practice or a better way of doing something or a different way of doing something you leave uh, those comments in the com box or maybe a place to get uh, some of the parts and the things you've seen here. Uh, you can always reach Rockin' H Farm Toys on Facebook and at rockinhfarmtoys.com. Thanks again and we'll catch you another time.